And so if we set aside these basic, principle, difficult things in order to jump out there and do something public and something great, then we prove ourselves to be hypocrites. What is the most important trait in a man? Is it giftedness? Absolutely not. Some of the most gifted men in the world are, are self-destructive and destroy others. What does your wife need? What does your children need? What do your children need? What does the world need from you? Christ-likeness. This is what we are to strive toward. And it breaks my heart. Sometimes I, you know, I don't like to go to conferences. I don't like to preach in them. I, I just sometimes in the middle of all the stuff being said all the time, I just want to stand up and say, Enough! I've already got more truth than I know how to obey. I don't just want to know. I want to change. And I don't want to change on the so-called spiritual level. But at public level, maybe is a better word. I want to change in the inner chambers of my heart. That even his thoughts, the deepest expression of who he is, it was his desire that they be according to the will of Almighty God. The freest man on the face of the earth is the one who makes himself a slave to a perfect master. Where has God been wrong? And where has He wronged you? Has there ever been a time when you've listened to Him, when you've obeyed Him, when you've sought out His will, that He has misled you somehow? Never! But have you ever followed your own ways and been misled by your own devices? Always. Why not? It is extreme. It is deliberate. 1 Timothy 4, 7-8 through 8, But have nothing to do with worldly fables fit only for old women. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. Now here's an extremely important question. When I go to an Olympic athlete and I watch him, it is obvious what he eats, what he drinks, he gets up early in the morning, he trains, he goes to school, he comes back, he trains some more, he eats right, he goes to bed, he gets up, he reads journals on his particular sport, he is constantly working to be better. And we admire them for that. But look what he says here to you. Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. And again, I want to just put this where we can understand it. The people who most observe your life, would they see you taking positive, real steps in your life to grow in godliness? I can't tell you how many men that I have been around that would tell me about their fathers and say things, you know, my father was a lot, of, a lot of good things, but the thing that had the biggest impact on me was every morning, before my dad would get up to plow or do this or do that, I'd see him there before the Word of God, studying the Word, and I'd see him praying. I've heard so many testimonies that they could look at their dad and in spite of all his failures and faults, they knew this. Dad was serious about disciplining himself to godliness. Men, we have to believe this as though our life depended upon it because I can assure you it does. And not only does our life depend upon it, in a great way, the life of our family depends upon it. To study the Word, listen to me. How often do you cry out to God for greater and greater manifestations of the Spirit's power in your life?
two things about the Holy Spirit. One is that we must be asking for greater manifestation of the Spirit's power in our life and we must be careful. Walk on eggshells that we not grieve the Holy Spirit. What a precious treasure that we not grieve Him. Well, these are just some principles that I thought might help you because they've both hurt and helped me. So let's pray.